In this video you'll learn a secret which will let you turn your acoustic guitar into a real powerhouse. If you use it you can sound really loud and powerful and instead of you'll sound like First I'm gonna show you 5 most common chord shapes that are used in rock. After that I'll show you some cool tricks that you can do with this chord. Then I'm gonna give you some really important tips regarding your right hand because that's where the sound, that's where the rock comes from. Pay close attention to this part of the lesson, it's really important. And after that we are going to combine all this newfound information and you will learn how to write your own rock riffs. And okay, I'll show you the chords first. We're going to use open power chords here, so called ACDC chords. If you know them you can play basically every song from the first two ACDC records, they are really common in rock and the most important thing is that they are open power chords. Of course you can play this shape or this shape but when we got an open chord on acoustic guitar we got this open strings ringing and it gives us some extra power, some extra sustain and that's what we're trying to achieve here. So here are our chords. Let's start with the A5. It's the same as A major, we just mute our B string with the index finger. And don't forget to mute the low E string with your thumb. Our next chord is the D5. Once again it's the same as D major, we just don't play high E string. We mute it. And once again, don't forget about your thumb. Mute low E string. You can also mute A string. Your chord will sound like this. But it's alright if you leave it open. It's a bit more fat that way. Now, now let's move on to the E power chord. It's really simple. You just put mini bar here on the second fret and mute everything from G and higher. Here's your E5. Okay, G5 power chord. It's the same as G major, just uh, mute the A string. Mute it with your middle finger here. Put it like this and as you can hear, it doesn't ring. Okay, and there are two ways that we can play C chord. The first one is this shape, just don't fret E note on the D string. You can either not press it or mute it with your ring finger. Here's your C power chord. Or we can use C9 chord, it works really great after G power. Here's our G, we just move our middle finger to the A string. And here's our C9 chord. It works really great in this kind of riffs. Okay, now that we know the chords, I'm going to show you some cool tricks that you can do with them. Like, And by the way, if you're enjoying this lesson, my name is Andrew, you're watching First Fret Lessons. Our goal is to help you become a guitarist people will want to listen to. And if you want to get five free and really useful lessons which are not available on YouTube, be sure to check the link down in the description. Okay, let's move on. I'm pretty sure you heard stuff like this a million times in rock, in blues. I'm talking about adding this note. To simplify this lesson I'm not going to dive deep into the music theory. Just remember 3rd fret on low E, 3rd fret on the A and 3rd fret on the D. And now when you are playing your E chord you can can add this third fret here. When you play A power chord, you can also play both low E and A string. And of course you can combine them. A million legendary rock riffs use these exact notes. And you can do the same thing with the D chord. Use D string and A string. Don't mess around with a low E when you're on a D chord, because yeah, it sounds bad. And another cool thing that you can do to add some rock and roll and blues feeling to your riff is... Uh, what am I doing? This is A power chord and I use my ring finger to fret the 4th fret on the D string. I fret this note and lift it up. You can do the same thing on the D chord. Once again it's fret 4 on the G string. And on the E, fret 4 on A string. And one more trick that you can do with the G chord. 
you can use your free index finger to play this note second fret on the D string and you can combine our previous trick with this one to get some really cool results like and so on and so forth. Okay, and now we arrived to the most important parts of this lesson. We're going to talk about the right hand and your pick. First thing first, a lot of people get really confused when they look up the tabs or chord shapes on the internet, because for example, A power chord, they see that you gotta play only these three strings and they're really careful with their right hands. They are playing these chords like really carefully they don't let their right hand go and that's not how we play these types of riffs what it should do is properly mute all the strings around as i told you we use our thumb here and index finger here and you just throw your right hand without worrying to hit the wrong strings because of course if you don't mute anything you are worried that you get all these unwanted strings but we don't have to worry we have to hit the guitar so mute everything check yourself and then just throw your right hand the same thing when we add these notes for example i want to play third fret on the lowest string i'm not doing it like this sometimes you can of course there are riffs that are not played that aggressively but if you're trying to play in the style of ACDC or other classic rock I fret this note and I mute everything with this finger and you see I just throw my right hand and I sound r much louder than same thing on the A string I use my thumb to mute low E instead of so don't hesitate it doesn't matter what you're playing here even if you playing these kinds of riffs once again everything is muted and you just you let your right hand go because otherwise it may be all right at times but not in this case okay and there is one really common misconception the moment beginner guitarists they think that if they need to play rock if they want to play something hard they gotta attack the strings really hard like they're trying to do it with force but that's not how we do it uh the power the groove so-called rock it comes from speed well if i'm gripping my pick to tight if i'm like dragging it through the strings it's a bit too loud it's not that pleasant to listen to like I mean that's not aggressive playing it's bad playing don't hold your pick too tight uh, don't apply any extra pressure just throw your hand fast it's like uh, your drummer with a drumstick just throw your hand fast or it's like you're holding a whip and if I'm throwing my hand too slowly Once again it sounds too boring so try to find this perfect balance and by the way if you enjoy this lesson if it's useful to you be sure to let us know in the comments we'll really appreciate it and feel free to post your own suggestions like what other topics do you want us to cover we'll gladly do it and now i'll show you how you can use all this information to write your own riffs to improvise to write your own songs perhaps i'm sure you will be able to do it Okay, now we know all the chords, all the tricks, we know how to play with your right hand and uh, just mix it all up. You can basically put any chords after another and it will sound fine. For example, I was in the key of A for most of this lesson. Let's start in D. As you can hear, all these chords 
really work great together. And as I told in the beginning, like, that's how the first two ACDC records work. You can be a little more creative with uh, your strumming. And even though we are strumming now instead of this single hits, be sure to still use all the tips that I gave you. Have fun, experiment, write your own riffs, write your own songs, I'm sure you will succeed. Okay, we talked a lot about the right hand in this lesson, but your threatened hand is also important, and if you have problems with it, be sure to check this video out. And alright, thank you for watching, see you next time, bye bye.